Good morning. I'm Karen Lee coming to you from my living room here in South Berwick for Karen Reads. I have two books for you today, so we'll be here for a little bit. Get comfortable. The first one is called Aunt Lulu, written by one of my favorite writers, Daniel Pinkwater. Daniel Pinkwater is a big husky guy who lives with his wife and a bunch of dogs and other animals in a big old farmhouse in the Hudson River Valley of New York State. He writes children's books and books for young adults. And he writes funny pieces that are read on, that he reads on national public radio once in a while. So listen for his name, Daniel Pinkwater. He's very good. And here is his book on Lulu. My Aunt Lulu is big and strong. She lives in a house with her pets. She has a cat, she has a fish, she has a bird, she has a mouse, and she has 14 dogs. The dogs are all huskies. Aunt Lula got them when she lived in Alaska. They are sled dogs. When Aunt Lulu lived in Alaska, she worked in a library. She would put a lot of books on a sled, then she would hook the dogs to the sled. Then she would say mush. Mush is what you say when to sled dogs to make them go. Mush, she would say. Then she would call out the dogs' names. Mush, Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie. Then Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie would pull the sled. Aunt Lulu would drive the sled to the diggings. The diggings were where the gold miners lived. When the gold miners saw Aunt Lulu coming, they would stop digging for gold. Look, it's Lulu the librarian, they would shout. Look, it's Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie. Did you bring the books we asked for, the gold miners would ask? Did you bring stories about cowboys? Did you bring stories about pirates? Did you bring stories about sweet little kittens? Did you bring stories about gold miners and wolves and freezing to death? All the miners. Yes, I have brought all the books you wanted, Aunt Lulu would say. Then she would hand books to the gold miners. She would collect the books the gold miners had finished reading and put them on the sled. Then she would turn the sled around. Mush, Melvin, Louise, 
Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie, Aunt Lulu would say, and the dogs would pull the sled back to the library. Sometimes Aunt Lulu would get lost in the snow. Sometimes the dogs would lose their way. Then Aunt Lulu and the dogs would have to sleep on the trail. But she was never late coming to collect books, and she always brought the miners the books they asked for. I lived up in the wilderness in northern Minnesota for one winter, and we did get lost one time when we were out and we did have to sleep on the trail. And it was a little scary because it was 40 degrees below zero, but we had good sleeping bags and we took care of each other. Aunt Lulu decided it was time to leave Alaska. She missed her home. She missed her family. She missed her friends. She had enough of snow. She'd had enough of cold. She'd had enough of miners. Those miners are nice fellows, Aunt Lulu said, but they get boring after a while. She wrote a letter. Get a new librarian, she wrote in the letter. I am going home. You can see the icicles in her window. Then she said goodbye to her dogs. Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie. I am leaving, Aunt Lulu said. Of course you can't come with me. All the dogs began to cry. Sweetie Pie climbed into Aunt Lulu's lap. He looked at her with sad eyes. He licked her chin. I suppose I could just take you, Aunt Lulu said. Then she looked at all the other dogs. They look sad too. Do you all want to come with me? The dogs all jumped up and down. We live in New Jersey, will you like that? The dog smiled and barked. It doesn't get as cold as Alaska. Will that be all right? The dogs rolled on the ground and waved their feet in the air. I guess you want to come with me, Aunt Lulu said. Okay, it is settled. We will all go and live in New Jersey. There's some very happy dogs. There was a noise outside on Lulu's house. It sounded like shouting, like shooting, also like a moose making moose noises. What could that be, Aunt Lulu said. She looked out the window. It's the miners, she said. They have come all the way from the diggings. The miners knocked on Aunt Lulu's door. May we come in, they asked. Certainly, Aunt Lulu said, this is a nice surprise. The miners came, came into Aunt Lulu's house. Their names were Nick Slade, Blackie Jake, Baldy, Bart, and Spanish Ralph. We heard you were going away, Bart said. We came to say goodbye, Nick said. We shouted, 
and shot off our gun like miners do, said Baldy. To show you that we like you, said Slade. Thank you, Aunt Lulu said. I also heard moose noises. That is your present, Jake said. My present? You bought me a moose? No, we bought you a moose call, said Spanish Ralph. You blow it and a moose will answer, if there are any moose around. Of course, if you would like to have a moose to take home with you, we could get you one, said Blackie. Oh, no thank you, said Aunt Lulu. A moose call will be very nice. When I am home in New Jersey, I will blow it and remember you all. The miners blushed and shuffled their feet and took their hats off. We like the books you brought us, the miner said. Another librarian will bring you books, Aunt Lulu said. Would you like to have cups of coffee and Wolverine stew? Looks like he's holding the moose call in his hands. Yes, please, the miner said. Aunt Lulu brought the miners cups of coffee and bowls of wolverine stew. Where will you live in New Jersey, Spanish Ralph asked. Parsipani, Aunt Lulu said. That's a beautiful place, Baldy said. Are you taking the dogs with you, Jake asked. Yes, said Aunt Lulu. That's good, Blackie said. Yes, said Aunt Lulu. The dogs will like living in Parsipani, Slade said. I hope so, Aunt Lulu said. After the miners finished their cups of coffee and bowls of wolverine stew, they all said goodbye to Aunt Lulu and went away. Nice med men, Aunt Lulu said to herself, but boring. back to live in New Jersey, the first thing she did was to come and see us. It was winter. There was plenty of snow. She came to see us in a sled. She wore a parka lined with fur. Pulling the sled were Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and sweetie pie. There she is on the tollway. Aunt Lulu showed me the moose call the miners had given her. You may keep this, she said. But don't blow it outdoors or moose will come. We don't have any moose in Parsipani on in New Jersey, my mother said. You might have some, Aunt Lulu said. You don't want them around the house. Are you always going to go around in that dog sled, my mother asked. I don't see why not, Aunt Lulu said. What will you do in the summer, my mother asked. When summer comes, we'll have to see, Aunt Lulu said. Don't you think a car would be better, my mother asked. Not while I have this perfectly good sled dog team, Aunt Lulu said.
summer came, Aunt Lulu came to see us. She had put wheels on her dog sled. She was not wearing a fur-lined parka. She had a dress on. She had sunglasses with pink frames. Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie all had sunglasses with pink frames, too. We like this warm weather, Aunt Lulu said. still lives in Parsipani, New Jersey. In winter, she drives the dog sled all over town. In summer, she drives the dog sled with wheels on it. Winter and summer, she wears her sunglasses with pink frames. And Melvin, Louise, Phoebe, Willie, Norman, Hortense, Bruce, Susie, Charles, Teddy, Nettie, Eddie, Freddie, and Sweetie Pie wear their sunglasses with pink frames, too. Okay. Hi, our second book is called The Lost Lake by Alan Say. Alan is a Japanese American. I couldn't find in his autobiography exactly how old he was when he immigrated from Japan. But um, he has had an interesting life. Um, he has written books for children and for young adults, and he illustrates them. The Lost Lake. I went to live with Dad last summer. Every day he worked in his room from morning till night, sometimes on weekends too. Dad wasn't much of a talker, but when he was busy, he didn't talk at all. I didn't know anybody in the city, so I stayed home most of the time. It was too hot to play outside anyway. In one month, I finished all the books I'd brought and grew tired of watching TV. One morning, I started cutting pictures out of old magazines just to be doing something. They were pictures of mountains and rivers and lakes and showed people fishing and canoeing. Looking at them made me feel cool, so I pinned them up in my room. Dad didn't notice them for two days. When he did, he looked at them one by one. Nice pictures, he said. Are you angry with me, Dad? I asked, because he saved old magazines for his work. It's all right, Luke. I'm having this place painted soon anyway. He thought I was talking about the marks I had made on the wall. That Saturday, Dad woke me up early in the morning and told me that we were going to go camping. I was wide awake in a second. He gave me a pair of brand new hiking boots to try on. They were perfect. In the hallway, I saw a big backpack and a knapsack all packed and ready to go. What's in them, Dad? I asked. Later, he said, we have a long drive ahead of us. In the 
the car. I didn't ask any more questions because Dad was always so grumpy in the morning. Want a sip? He said, handing me his mug. He'd never let me have coffee before. It had lots of sugar in it. Where are we going? I finally asked. We're off to the lost lake, my lad. How can you lose a lake? No one's found it, that's how, Dad said, smiling. Grandpa and I used to go there a long time ago. It was our special place. So don't tell any of your friends. I'll never tell, I promised. How long are we going to stay there? Five days? Maybe a week? We're going to sleep outside for a whole week? That's the idea? That's the idea. Oh, boy. We got to the mountains in the afternoon. It's a bit of a hike to the lake, son, Dad said. I don't mind, I told him. Are there any fish in the lake? Hope so, we'll have to catch our dinner, you know. You didn't bring any food? Of course not. We're going to live like true outdoorsmen. Oh, Dad saw my face and started to laugh. He must have been joking. I didn't think we were going very far anyway because Dad's pack was so heavy, I couldn't even lift it. Well, Dad was like a mountain goat. He went straight up the trail whistling all the while but i was gasping in no time my knapsack got very heavy and i started to fall behind dad stopped for me often but he wouldn't let me take off my pack if i did i'd be too tired to go on he said it was almost supper time when we got to the lake The place reminded me of the park near Dad's apartment. He wasn't whistling or humming anymore. Welcome to Found Lake, he muttered from the side of his mouth. What's wrong, Dad? Do you want to camp with all these people around us? I don't mind. Well, I do. Are we going home? Of course not. He didn't even take off his pack. He just turned and started to walk away. Soon the lake was far out of sight. Then it started to rain. Dad gave me a poncho and it kept me dry but I wondered where we were going to sleep that night. I wondered what we were going to do for, for dinner. I wasn't sure about camping anymore. I was glad when Dad finally stopped and set up the tent. The rain and the wind beat against it, but we were warm and cozy inside, and Dad had brought food. For dinner, we had salami and dried apricots. I'm sorry about the lake, Dad, I said. He shook his head. You know something, Luke? There aren't any secret places left in the world anymore. What if we go very far up in the mountains? Maybe we can find our own lake. 
There are lots of lakes up here, but that one was special, said Dad. But we've got a whole week, Dad. Well, why, why not? Maybe we'll find a lake that's not on the map. Sure, we will. We started early in the morning. When the fog cleared, we saw other hikers ahead of us. Sure enough, Dad became very glum. We're going cross country, partner, he said. Won't we get lost? A wise man never leaves without his compass. So we went off the trail. The hills went on and on. The mountains went on and on. It was kind of lonesome. It seemed as if Dad and I were the only people left in the world. And then we hiked into a big forest. At noontime, we stopped by a creek and ate lunch and drank ice cold water straight from the stream. I threw rocks into the water and fish like shadows darted in the pools. Isn't this a good place to camp, Dad? I thought we were looking for our lake. Oh yeah, right, I mumbled. but at least there's nobody around. The forest went on and on. I don't mean to scare you, Dad said, but we're in bear country. We don't want to surprise them, so we have to make a lot of noise. If they hear us, they'll just go away. What a time to tell me. I started to shout as loudly as I could. Even Dad wouldn't be able to beat off the bears. I thought about those people having fun back at the lake. I thought about the creek too, with all those fish in it. That would have been a fine place to camp. The lost lake hadn't been so bad either. It was dark when we got out of the forest. We built a fire and that made me feel better. Wild animals wouldn't come near a fire. Dad cooked beef, sto beef stroganoff and it was delicious. Later it was bedtime. The sleeping bag felt wonderful. Dad and I started to count the shooting stars. Then I worried that maybe we weren't going to find our lake. What are you thinking about, Luke? Dad asked. I didn't know you could cook like that, I said. Dad laughed. That was only freeze-dried stuff. When we get home, I'll cook you something really special. You know something, Dad? You seem like a different person up here. Better or worse? A lot better. How so? You talk more. I'll have to talk more often then. That made me smile. And then I slept. Dad shook me awake. The sun was just coming up, turning, turning everything all gold and orange and yellow. And there was the lake right in front of us. For a long time, 
we watched the light change across the water, getting brighter and brighter. Dad didn't say a word the whole time, but then I didn't have anything to say either. And there they are with the, na the lake that they found. All right, I hope you enjoyed our two books today, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.